Natalie Desai is here. She is a soprano, and she is appearing now in the Metropolitan Opera's Lucia de Lammermoor. Her portrayal of the title role is getting remarkable reviews. Here is a look at her singing the famous Mad Scene. <laughs> Anthony Tomasini of the New York Times called her, quote, one of the most intuitive and risk-taking singers before the public. I'm pleased to have her here at this table for the first time, having seen her performance on opening night, which got remarkable reviews, as we said. First of all, you're watching this video, and you said, I don't even know who that is. Yeah. I don't feel like it's me. I yes. don't even recognize the voice. No, it's complete, a complete stranger for me, this girl on stage. Which is a good point because uh, um, that means that I'm, I'm in, in another state when I'm singing. I'm someone else. And when I, when I look at this, at this film, it's very strange. I really have the impression it's uh, someone I don't know. I don't even recognize. Even the voice is strange and, and sounds strange to me. Is that just this particular character, or is it most of them? Most of them. All of them. I have the impression that I couldn't do that <laughs> if it was me. <laughs> How is it that you're where you are because you didn't start off to be where you are? No. Uh, first of all, I wanted to become a dancer. And when I was 13, I discovered that I wasn't gifted enough for that. So I... <laughs> that was a great despair for me. Yeah. And you and recognized it? Or somebody told you? No, I recognize it. Mm. I, I knew it. Because, you know, when, when you practice the dance, when you take lessons, you have the mirror in front of you. Mm. And you can see immediately what you're doing. Which is not exactly the same for the singers or for the actors. Singers and actors need an eye in front of them, mm. which is not the mirror, which is the director. <laughs> and so you, the ballet didn't work, and so then you said maybe... Something else? Yes, maybe theatre. Maybe theatre. So let's I go, go there. Let's go there. <laughs> it's, it seems to be easier just to talk, yes. you know. But uh, actually, it, that was also very difficult. And as you know, to become an actor or an actress with, maybe not with success, but with money to live, mm. <laughs> that's also very difficult. And then through the theatre, I discovered that I had a voice. Did and you that, discover it, or did somebody discover it for uh, you? The others, you know, mm. the eye, the, uh, and actually the ear of the others. They told me, oh, but you have a nice voice, you should take lessons. So I thought maybe that is the way for me, the easiest way for me to, to go To get on stage. on stage. Yeah. And what you wanted to do was get on stage. Yes, desperately. Desperately? Yes, since I was five. Why do you think that was true? Because for me, the stage is the space where everything is possible. So it's not the real life. Do you have still dreams that opera might lead to the theater? Yes. You do? 
Yes. You'd rather be in the theater than be in the opera? Yes. Really? Yes, but I will you be You know, that, this is just going to come as such a crushing disappointment <laughs> to all those people. I mean, yes. because you are what they all dream of. And we think of the lead role in an operatic performance as as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the people who love opera think they put people who are opera stars in our culture, in most cultures, as high as you can get. That's not the same for me. I think theater goes further in terms of emotion, in terms of acting, in terms of, of text also. Because in, the, in opera, the problem is that very often the libretto and the text is silly. Mm. So you have to play something else and you have to play the music more than the words, which is also a good thing. But I love the words. Do you think part of your success, huge success, is because you're a good singer, but also a good actor? I and hope that so. makes you more appreciated than if it was just your voice alone? I really hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. And I define myself as a singing actress, not as a singer. So when someone, for example, uh, thinks that I, I don't act well. For me, it's... it's That's crushing. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I would prefer that he says, oh, the she voice is not so great. Yeah. Because that I don't care. I care about the acting. You know, this is driving music lovers crazy for you to say this, I would think. <laughs> yes, I know. You know, here you are, and, they, and you're saying, I don't really want this most of all. I want it, but it's not my fairest thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes? No, but I'm happy. Uh, in fine, I'm happy to be where I'm, I am, because I, I can be on stage and I can deliver a something. A huge stage. Yes, a huge stage with... with the most famous stages the in the world. The most famous stage, the, the wonderful, wonderful conductor yeah. like James Levine and, and fantastic orchestra, a fantastic cast of colleagues. I mean, of course it's great, but I was not my first choice. And that, that is not what, what I want to achieve or... or what I could say is that I want to achieve that even better and further. I want to make a revolution in opera, and probably it would be very, very, very difficult, but I want to, to initiate a, a movement so that the opera goes more and more to theater. How is it, though, that some whose ambition was to be something else stands where you do? I mean, you would think that you you came to opera later. Yeah, I was 20 you when were I started. 20. Yes, yes I when know. I started to take lessons. Seriously, yeah. yeah. And you began to treat it seriously. Yeah. I mean, there are people who thought about this when they were six. Yes, six. I know. I know. Rudolf Nureyev uh, walked into a ballet mm -hmm. when he was eight with mm -hmm. his mother and walked out and said, That's what I want to be. I want to first yeah. on a stage like you, and then secondly, I want to be a ballet star. Yeah, and he, he was lucky enough to be gifted. Uh, and how gifted. <laughs> do you feel gifts you have? Yes. You do? Yes. But it's both, it's not just your voice. No, but it, first of all, it was a voice. Right. Um, but my desire conduct, conducted me and drove me to the acting. Which operas give you, which roles give you the opportunity to do everything you want to do? On an operatic stage, it's it's not it's not a question of a role. It's a question of uh, um, how you are directed by who. What's good and what's bad? When it's theatrical, when it's really um, a director who who directs us as actors. In that case, I'm, I I feel happy. When it's just a question of uh, beautiful sets and beautiful costumes, I don't yeah. care. My dream would be an empty stage. Empty. <laughs> One chair and bodies. The bodies of the singers, but singers able to act and to play as actors. That is my, my dream. But where can we do that? Because, of course, people, when people go to, to opera, they don't want to have a, an empty stage, and particularly here in America. They want to have entertainment. They, they want to have big show. They, have, they want to have Broadway with opera. What's the closest thing to you've ever seen to what you would like to see? Um, I've done some some beautiful, beautiful things. And On for a example, stage? Yes. With other actors? 
uh, and yeah, an orchestra. Yes, yes, uh, as an opera singer. And for example, the production we are going to to bring in the spring at the Met, the production of La Fille du Régiment, is one of them. It has a set, it has costumes, but it's a real comedy. It's with spoken text in French, so I can really express myself as an actress. It's very funny, which is very rare at the opera. And that, that is, for me, a dream of production. If you were an actress, would you more likely to be, have become a comedic actress? Yes. You have that in you. Yes, and I think it's so beautiful to make them laugh. <laughs> as they say. As <laughs> they say. Well, you have that ability. Yeah, it's a question of work also, because it's a question of being very, very, very serious in every situation, and also a question of rhythm. So if you work on that with a, with a good director, you, you get it. And it's a, it's a, it's a question of, of a lot of energy also, and I have that. Energy? Yes. How many directors do you think get you, understand you? Um, not so many. Not so many? No. Why is that? Because it's like in real life. You, ha you don't have not so many friends and people who understand you and, and who give you what you want and what you need. Well, it's more what you need, isn't yes. it? Yes. What I need is, is, um, is love yeah. <laughs> and, um, and help. Help to go further, help to be something else, somewhere else, and to go beyond what I think I can do. Is the singing easy? No, it is not. It has to, um, I have to pretend that it's easy when I'm on stage, of course. And in order to be able to pretend that, I have to work like a dog on the technique. Because my, my dream would be that people would be able to forget that I'm singing when I'm performing on, on the stage. You know what I mean? Mm. That it's so easy that it's like, like I were speaking. How, how do you feel about the opera? Lucia I de like Lama Lucia. First of all, I like the music. The music is much more interesting as, the, as the, the libretto, but the libretto, if sometimes is a bit silly or a bit old fashioned, I would say, because it's a Walter Scott story. Yeah. And today it's a bit difficult mm. for us. Mm. It's very romantic, a bit um, kitsch, I would say. But the story is very interesting. It's the story of a, of a woman who is a victim of her male env environment. And it's the story of many women from the past. So why not? But the music of Donizetti mm. is so beautiful. And it's so well composed for the voice that um, it's still interesting to present that in, in the 21st century. Well composed for your voice? Yeah, for my voice, but for other voices, for um, a female voice. And we're going to see uh, Dame Joan Sutherland singing. A phenomenon. <laughs> a phenomenon. Yes, because she was she she had a huge huge voice and she was able to to lighten it uh, suddenly and to do these these quick coloraturas and she had also the top high notes like a, like a coloratura soprano uh -huh. but with a big huge voice which is very very rare. Roll tape. Here it is. I mean, it was, it was incredible, the, the, the acceptance of the public and the, and the sudden international fame. I think the first time I sang in Italy, because Italy was, was somewhere where I thought, well, I mean, one day I might get to Italy to sing, but this was a fantastic debut. She's such a singer, she's such a voice, but at the same time, she's not an actress. So yeah. it's, it's, it's another time, in a way. Of all the opera stars you know, have heard, recognize, who was the best actress? Maria Callas. Everybody says that. Yeah, but it's true. But they also seem to suggest sometimes that her voice wasn't as good, but her acting overcame it. Yes, 
That's true. And that's why I love her so much. And she was such a musician also. No, I love her. I love her. And she inspires me every day. Inspires you? Yeah. To be? To be, to try to be even better every, every, every day. And she lived work. a grand life, too. Yeah, that has nothing to do with it. I, I, I you know, I, because I don't care about Onassis and things like that and, and the way she, but, but for example, I care about, about the fact she, she lost weight in order to be believable and mm. in order to make people dream when they go to opera. That's, that's very important, I think. Do you somehow want to dis lift on your own shoulders and change this idea and make opera more theatrical? Yes. Yes. And do you think by doing that you'll make it more popular? I don't know. I make it better. Do you get support for this idea from no. your... No. Not at all. In fact, they don't want you to do it? No. Nobody wants, to, wants me to do it. But I don't care. I, I know where. I'm no I, doubt about that. I no know doubt. where I want to go. You obviously have this will yes. and this determination, uh, and I assume that's part of what made you put you where you are now. Yes. Beyond talent. Yes. You know, because you started late. Yes, sort of. I started at 25. Well, that's late, so isn't late. it? Not so late. No, no. It's it's a good age, I think. To start, to start. singing. Yes. To start on stage. On stage. Yes. Roll tape. This is another clip from Lucia de la Mamor. Lots of pressure. Yes. And particularly for this opening, the pressure was quite big. Because? Because my picture were, was all on over the buses. city. Yes, I own the buses in this city. <laughs> you do. I'm driving downtown today and I see this big bus comes by me and I said, yes. there's my guest tonight. Yes, yes. It's, it's very bizarre, that also. Yeah. And that, that puts you in, under pressure. So when we had this opening, it was a big event with oh, yeah. Hollywood stars, right, right. with a red carpet, with right. a big party afterwards. Right. So I was very happy to be able to control my, my nerves, mm -hmm. in a way, and to be able to concentrate on the performance as if nothing was happening around. You and, were into the character. Yes. And that's, that's sort of... That was, for me, sort of the first time that I could do that, that I could achieve that. And I was very proud of myself because of that. When you <laughs> walked off at the end, after your last... Yes. Song, did you know you just nailed it? For me, I nailed it. So... You know what the critics would say, but you knew for you, you yes, got it. Yes. If they didn't like it, you did what you... I did my best. You did. So and you I, liked what you did. Uh, no, but no? I did my best. Why didn't you like it? 
No, because because it's it's never what I what I want. You know, it could be could have been better. I, um, I did some mistakes in the music. I, I forgot some words. I, I don't know what, but it, it was not as perfect as it, as it could be. But of course, you forgot what some words? Words, yes. You forgot. Words? Yes, yes. But you you don't know. No, nobody knows. I, know I shouldn't say that. By I the know. way, <laughs> <laughs> only the prompter knows. Oh, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only the prompter knows. Yes. Yeah. It said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where is the prompter? Hmm. The prompter is uh, it is. Right. You can always see it. Yeah, yeah. We we always see see her. It's a her, yeah. and she's fantastic because right. she gives us everything, right. every word, every. Um, uh, she she she's really like a second conductor. That's a great role. That's a great thing to know about. Yes, yeah. yes. She helps a, a, us a lot. And yeah. and before the performance, she comes and we we rehearse a little and and we talk about the mistakes of the last time. It's it's really a great great. It takes help. talent to have that job. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. James Levine. Ah. Ah. James Levine is one of the best conductors in the world. Why? First. First of all, because I think he loves singers. He loves musicians and he loves making music together. And he loves the moment. You know? He's able to change if you change. He's able to, to follow. Oh. He's able to, to help if you're in trouble. To breathe with you, and that's why singers love him so much. What What does it mean to be in trouble? Be in trouble, for example, you forgot to breathe. Ah, may that's happen. What I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. It may happen. So he helps you with the tempo, for example, or you go too fast, mm -hmm. and he warns the orchestra. He either has to, to accelerate. Wait, uh, yeah, to, to either to accelerate or, the pace, or to yeah. or to wait or yeah. that that's what I call a great conductor. People like Anthony Mengele. Who did uh, Butterfly who did last Butterfly year? Who did Butterfly last year? Big big success. Big success. Wonderful production. I yeah, mean, but I, I, I've but you some... like this idea of this person coming from somewhere else, not opera to direct We're opera not. because he's it comes from the world that you yes. admire, yes. movies and theater. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, I haven't seen the production. I just have seen some, some pictures and some, some highlights, uh, because that was a dress rehearsal today, for example. But um, um, I like this idea that, that, that uh, other people can, can bring fresh air in opera and, and new yeah. visions, new ideas also to represent it. But you think opera needs that in a sense? Yes. It needs a Surely. bit of fresh air. Sure. And sure. change. And change. Yes. Yeah. How about Mary Zimmerman? Mary comes from theater also, but she comes from a very particular theater. She does her own plays in a way she writes a lot. She has a company since a long time. So she works with the same people since a very long time. So it was for her a new experience to come to the opera for the first time. I mean, for for the second time, actually, but for the first time in such a big house as the Met. So she had a hard time to accommodate and to acc acclimate herself. Yeah, acclimate. Mm -hmm. Or accommodate the one. Yeah. Um, because she didn't know exactly what what we need and, and what we, we we were waiting from from her. So it was a bit difficult, but we found a way. But But I think she has to learn more how how to direct um, singers, but it's normal. It was her first big opera, so it takes time. If you could have chosen the opera to be your opening here at the Metropolitan, mm -hmm. what would you have chosen? I think I, I had so? yeah, Lucia. Would you really? Yes. Because it's such a great role for. It's a fantastic role to express yourself, and also. Uh, I, I would have done exactly here. the same. That means the opening you... with Lucia, and then in the spring, a totally different opera. What is going like to be in the spring? La Fille du Régiment, which is a oh. comedy. Oh, so that'll be great for you. Yeah, it, it's totally different. I'm, I'm here. I'm a little fragile uh, girl, a victim uh, who, who escapes uh, the reality, going to the madness. And there, I'm a tomboy. Um, very energetic, who falls in love with a with, with a, a nice guy from uh, the country. Right. You know, it's it's totally different, and and for an actress, it's it's of course a big big chance to present these two 
facets. Facets, yes, yeah. yes. Where do you live? In Paris. You do live in Paris. The fact that you're French, mm -hmm. how do we hear that in your voice? Uh, I hope you don't hear Okay, it. that's the point. Yeah. yeah you hope we it's, don't. It's, it's not, it's not a... It I mean, be. it can be a weakness to be French because the French school of singing has, has not that good reputation. Uh, uh, you know, the last great French singer... Unlike German or Italian. Yeah. Um, no, American singers have a best reputation. Do they really? Yes. Because they have the reputation to, to arrive on the market very prepared. But maybe with the less originality than Europeans. Oh, you think that's it, the acting and the originality, the create the... I hope, you hope. I hope we have now, you that. You had two vocal operations, haven't you? Yes. And, and no, why? Why? What because were you I doing a, to your voice? I had a pseudocyst on this yeah. chord and a polyp on this one. Now, were you scared to death that it would change things? Oh, yes, of course. Of course yeah. I thought I... It was over, maybe. Yeah, I thought it was over. But I'm the proof that it's not over. Yes, you are. And I must say that uh, many, many singers have operation on their chords, but they are ashamed of that. And they shouldn't, because it may happen. It's not a shame. And it's at the contrary. That, that means that we do our job really, and that we, we can be tired sometimes, because we give so much. Name for me, if you can, if you can, it's okay a film role that you wish you had had, or mainly a film role? A film role? Is there one that comes to mind and says, God, I wish I had the opportunity to do that? Oh, Sophie's Choice, probably. Really? Yes, because I love the so much Meryl Streep. part played by Meryl Streep? Yes, I love her so much. It's, more, it's my favorite actress. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you very it's much. great to meet you. One last look at you as Lucia. Here it is.